Hey guys, it's been a while since I've done this. Skipped a week or two, I believe. Uh, I'm just gonna test something out if this is working. If it is, then we're good to go. Uh, one sec, guys. All right, it's working. <laughs> All right, today I'm gonna to talk to you about um, stress management. Um, brief intro on myself, who am I? Who is this young, good-looking mother sucker? <laughs> Just kidding. Um, basically, my name is Jose Villablanca. Um, I have over a decade of experience um, in Canada with some certs in uh, the States as well. Um, multiple certifications in functional fitness and holistic lifestyle coaching. And um, basically, I'm founder of Holy Fit, it's a growing leader in corporate wellness. Yay! But because of the pandemic, I've been shifting, and hence this Zoom presentation. Um, all right, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out over here. Um, e websites there, email address, Facebook, if you're watching this on Facebook right now, and our Instagram um, handles as well. Okay, so today I want to talk to you about stress. It's a really big thing, right? Um, this day and age, a lot of people say, oh, I'm so stressed, life is so hard, this and that, right? Um, and yes, that's true. Life is stressful, right? Um, uh, sorry, guys, I'm just trying to figure this thing out. I wish I could do side by side, but I guess I can't do that. All right, um, stress isn't the problem, right? What we want to do here is not eliminate stress but actually manage it because there's good stress and there is bad stress all right um and here's the thing i want you to look at it this way stress is actually a great signifier that you care deeply about something for example if you're stressed about your job you probably might not have one if you're stressed about your love life you probably would lose he or she whatever your preference is no judgment if you're stressed about homework say for example if you're a student um, you probably won't do your homework and you'd probably fail, right? So simple. Stress is actually a good thing. It, um, another way I like to say it is, um, which is in the next slide, so I guess I did it wrong. Um, so let's not look at it this way. Stress is not the problem, but too much stress is. In other words, distress is, okay? There's actually a good uh, amount of stress that's good for you, which is called eustress, so eu stress right bad stress is chronic stress or too much stress that's distress okay um there that's what i was trying to say earlier so stress actually tells us where we need to focus our attention so if you're stressed about say for example your job or your homework right then you need to focus on that because that is um, something urgent right if you're stressed about your job or your homework then probably there isn't anything nothing problem nothing new happening right it's the same thing over and over again all right, um, and as a personal trainer and a holistic lifestyle coach, what we do here is we look at um, stress, as you can see here, a sink, right? Look, think of it like um, there are six different types of stresses, which I'll get into shortly, but the more you can lower down the stressors, the better it is for you. Obviously, you need some stressors, right? So what's this sink signify? Stress would be basically um, water going into the sink, right? Um, and you need to de-stress every so often because if not, it would overflow. And again, like I said earlier, a good amount of stress is actually good for you. It's good for growth. For example, um, if you're stressed about uh, your job, then that means you're doing something very repetitive, right? For example, flipping burgers all day. That's nothing stressful, right? That's all you have to do um, all day because um, there's nothing new you need to learn. But if they start giving you other things like making a salad, um, you know, buying the meat, right? Then that could be a bit stressful, but that stress actually signifies that you're getting out of your comfort zone and you're trying something new, okay? All right, so like I said earlier, there's six types of stressors. So the more you can lower uh, each of them down, the better it is overall for your stress levels, okay? Um, so let's say, for example, the first stressor is physical stress, okay? But again, there's good and bad to each stressor. All right, so if you can lower down your physical stress as much as possible, then all the other five stressors um, and cumulatively isn't as uh, impactful because again, it's like a sink. So the, the more you can lower down the water, the better it is for you, the less likely 
the sink would overflow. In other words, less likely you would have a stressful or a yeah, panic. What do you call that? A panic, panic mode, panic, uh, you know, like I've never had it, so I don't know <laughs> how to explain it, but you know what I mean, okay? I'm always lost of words and I do a lot of talks all the time and I can't seem to figure out the words. Okay, the good type of stress is physical stress. So basically you stress your body to make positive changes by burning excess fat and gaining lean muscle tissue. Bad physical stress is not exercising. We're supposed to move, right? It doesn't have to be lifting weights, something very scientific. It could just be walking, a brisk walk, right? Um, even if it's in the mall, obviously not during this pandemic, but any type of movement is actually good for you because you're pumping blood around your body, right? Or if you haven't seen results and you're really hard on yourself, then you start overtraining. So that's actually bad for you too, okay? Because that could lead to injuries. So that's the good type of stress and bad, all right? Uh, and you just need a good amount, like I said earlier, because if you're doing too much, um, then that could lead to overtraining. Here are a few tips on how you can manage your stressors. So like I said, um, exercise, move as much as possible, even every day. And it doesn't have to be like going to the gym every day. It could just be stretching. That's a form of exercise because you're moving your body parts in, in different areas like I'm doing here. I was wondering if I could do a side by side here, but I guess you see it. All right. Or um, working out, working in is more uh, regenerative. It's more um, working out is pushing hard, right? Sweating a lot. Working is more relaxing, but still with the movement. All right, uh, progressive muscular relaxation. I actually can't remember that right now. Um, it's been a while since I did this, so I have to Google that. And deep breathing. So again, exercise in other words. Um, I'll, I'll be checking any comments that you might, guys might be having on my phone. Uh, I'm just not, um, I just can't see it from my end right now. So just FYI. Next type of stressor is nutritional stress. Let's talk about that. So good stress would be eating for your nutritional needs, okay? So say for example, a 20 year old athlete wouldn't have the same nutritional needs than a 60 year old female, right? Because uh, it depends on what, uh, just checking some stuff here if there's any comments yet. Okay, it, it really depends on, um, say for example, the athlete, right? He's in his 20s. He obviously needs to eat a lot more protein and carbs just to keep going as opposed to um, the older lady that just wants to stay healthy, all right? So bad nutritional stress would be eating anything and just anything. That's why I always say um, if you were to count anything, it would be calories because that could be deceiving because a calorie from a chocolate bar is not the same as a calorie from an organic vegetable, okay? They both have, let's say, for example, um, they could have... the yeah, they both have calories, but they're not, in terms of per calorie, they're not high quality, right? They're not the same in terms of quality, sorry. So that's why I'd rather you count the macros, all right? Um, here's a tip. So for nutritional needs, basically just finding out what you need, right? What kind of macros, or sorry, how many kind of macros you need in terms of protein, fats, and carbohydrates. And one way to find out is basically, I'm doing a complete assessment. So you can just reach out if you want to do that and we can hook you up with, uh, with an assessment. All right, because we need different macronutrients for different things, right? So carbohydrates is usually the source of energy. Um, protein is more for rebuilding and then fats is obviously just more for satiation and, and other things that um, aren't here right now again. <laughs> All right. Um, Another thing is, ooh, and I was just having a, a sip of this matcha. Um, limit your caffeine and alcohol consumption. Okay, alcohol, I'm actually trying to quit, period. Like, I don't really like drinking. I only like the taste of beer. So that's easy for me. Um, because it increases stress and may trigger depression. For caffeine as well, for me, I'm, I'm definitely trying to drink less. I don't want to rely on it, right? I don't want to use it. Well, I want to use it. I don't want it to use me. All right, so once in a while, I actually switch. Um, instead of just drinking coffee, I switch to tea. So this one's matcha, right? Um, you can also do black tea, green tea, switching from different kinds, all right? 
Um, another tip is drinking enough water because it really lubricates your body. And um, sometimes you're just thirsty, you're not hungry. So you don't want to overeat because when you do, it's actually uh, stressful for your digestive system. And here's another thing, eat organic as much as you can. Um, don't think it's expensive. Actually think of why other types of fruits and vegetables are cheaper, right? Because they're cheaper to produce. Now cheap doesn't mean inexpensive, okay? And here's the thing, you'll actually eat less when you have higher quality foods. So think about that, all right? Yes, it could be cheaper, but you're paying for a price, which is your health. So as much as possible, try to eat organic. Um, another thing I like to try, or I got from Paul Check where I'm certified under the Check Institute. So uh, try a caveman diet. So basically it's avoid eating nuts, grains, seeds, dairy, and processed products like sugar, salt, honey, and et cetera, okay? Um, so yeah, in other words, try to eat unprocessed foods as much as possible. So what cavemen used to eat? The third type of stressor is mental stress, all right? There's good stress, which is positive thinking, right? Always looking at the bright side of things versus negative thinking, which is, um, or overthinking, right? Because your brain is actually like one-tenth the size of your body, but it actually could take up, I can't remember now, one-third or one-twentieth of your whole body, but it could take up one-third of your energy, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. But I haven't said that in a really long time. I'm just going to have to comment down below just to remind you. But in other words, what I'm trying to say is that we use a lot of energy when we think. And overthinking is normal. I want to say that, by the way. Overthinking is normal because um, when you overthink, sometimes it, some people think it's called worrying, right? But worrying actually made us survive, okay? Because when we worry about things that are uncertain, we, we look for other alternatives as to, okay, so if this plan doesn't happen, what can I do to shift or to have a plan B? So worrying actually made us survive, all right? because we could actually be happy all day, right? But when we were hunters and gatherers and there were lions and all these prey and predator around us, if we're always happy and never looking at what could go wrong, right? Without worrying, then we could actually die happy, right? So this is actually a survival mechanism. So now that you know that, um, you just have to act appropriately. It's like, okay, worrying, that's normal. That's a defense mechanism of human beings. Okay, so is this valid, right? You ask yourself, you start asking questions and seeing, um, and if you still worry, then you figure out plan A, plan B, plan C, and eventually you probably won't worry anymore, okay? So here are some tips, um, which I kind of said already. So identify the source of the stress. First things first, it's important to know where the stress originates so you can see how to manage it properly. I personally like to write things down because if you're just mentally thinking about those things, it's actually in your head. But when you actually write it down, you free up head space, okay? Exercise. Actually, exercise really helps because it gives you the happy chemicals, right? It gives you the endorphins and it makes you um, feel better, right? Um, physically, emotionally, mentally. Simple. Exercise is like the perfect drug pill. The perfect drug, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> exercise is just perfect, right? Everyone should be exercising, period, because of all the benefits. Um, all right. Tip, another tip is eat well. When you have the right types of food, right? Eat junk, feel like junk. Simple as that. But when you eat clean, it makes you think better. You don't have that mental fog, right? You don't feel sluggish and you're good to go. So yes, your fuel actually can affect the way you think and feel especially. That's why we also do um, emotional eating, right? Stress eating. Okay, next type of stressor is thermal stress. Um, a good type of thermal stress would be cold or hot therapy. Um, this is a new thing now too. Uh, well, it's not new, but more and more people are doing this, especially when we see athletes like getting to a cryogenic tank, right? The, or chamber, right? Where it's like cold gas coming to them, or you see um, athletes taking an ice cold um, bath, right? So they go in the bathtub with um, ice cubes in there, all right? And then, um, then they'd hop into an infrared sauna, right? Or a hot tub that, that depends. So that's basically cold and hot contrasting. All right. That's a contrast therapy, in other words. So basically, I would do it as well every so often. Um, it's really good. So basically, you go in an infrared sauna, right? So you don't feel as hot, but it actually gets through your system better. Um, and then, so like 20 minutes of that. And then when you can't take it any longer, for me, it's usually just 10 minutes or 15. Then I hop into, I jump hop, hop, like a bunny. 
I jump into a cold pool, right? And it shocks your system, but it's actually really good for you. And then take a quick break and then rinse and repeat. Go back again to the infrared sauna and then back to the cold dip. All right, um, bad thermal stress is if you're always hot or you're always cold, all right? A good contrast is actually good for your system because it boosts your immune system and actually wakes you up. Uh, for me, conscious therapy after that, at the end of the day, makes me sleep a lot better at night, okay? So yeah, here in the Philippines, it's really hot, all right? So you make sure that uh, you try not to um, stay out in the heat too long. Okay, because that could cause a headache and other symptoms. Same thing when uh, in the winter, when I was living in Canada. Um, yeah, and you can't just be out all day in the really frigid cold. All right, next step of stressor is chemical stress. That's basically just a um, good type of chemical stress is just eating clean food, right? As much as possible, as closest to nature, all right? Uh, versus something that's processed, all right, uh, chemicals can actually go through your skin as well. So skin products, right? Stuff that you put in your hair, that's why they have those paraben-free stuff now. And chemicals that you can inhale, right? Through pollution, air pollution. Especially here in the Philippines, diesel is really bad. Even gasoline um, exhaust is bad. And the way that they check here, it's not that rigid. All right? Um, and you can actually, so I was gonna say earlier, um, when you're eating organic, you don't get as much chemicals because of the pesticides that are not in the organic produce. So here, drink lots of water, right? It is really good for you because um, sweating actually is a type, it, it, you detoxify through the skin, right? So when you drink lots of water, you're well hydrated, which means it's easier to sweat, right? And again, it's a great lubricant for your body. Next thing is reduce sugar intake. If you have cravings for sugar, such as soft drinks, coffee, well, when you put sugar in your coffee, and desserts, you should start to reduce it and replace it um, with other sweet alternatives, right? The healthier ones like stevia, right? Or just uh, try to drink more water. Too much sugar in your body can cause diabetes, heart disease, obesity, and other lifestyle um, sickness. <laughs> All right. Uh, again, like I said earlier, eat organic fruits and vegetables as much as possible because then uh, it's void of pesticides, herbicides, and other sides. The pesticides, herbicides. I don't know what else is there. There's a few other sides. All right. So again, avoid the chemicals from there. Um, another thing you can do is use organic home and skincare products, right? That's why they're saying nowadays they have those paraben free shampoos, uh, soaps. All right. And when you use, uh, Healthy alternatives is actually better for you than those chemically made um, skin products. All right, next thing is, um, yes, a lot of people use those spray air fresheners. That's not natural. Let's try to avoid that. I actually like to use essential oils, um, even for my perfume. Um, it's a mix of essential oils because uh, perfume is just pretty much just chemical. So you don't want to inhale that or even spray it on your body and your skin, right? We, know, we don't want none of that. All right, um, another thing you can do too is surround yourself with home, uh, with home plants, with indoor plants, okay? Because they actually clean the air, right? So um, they're air cleaning plants. You can find them. If you just Google it, you'll see it on YouTube, on blogs, they're everywhere. Um, reduce microwave use. Because um, if you use a microwave and you're using a plastic like Tupperware, um, it actually can leach into your food. All right, so um, for me, I would get those food jars, stuff like that, where it actually keeps the, the food warm. Or if it's a cold uh, meal, it keeps it cold for a few hours. It's insulating the heat or the cold from your food. So yeah, I actually, don't, I rarely, rarely use the microwave. All right, electromagnetic stress. Here's another thing uh, with 5G and stuff coming up, right? Apparently, it might be worse for you, all right? Um, Good electromagnetic stress would be getting to nature, right? Getting out of um, the concrete jungle, right? It's a great way to detox your system and grounding. Basically, grounding is just stepping on uh, the earth with your bare feet. So it's actually very refreshing, right? Refresh. So it's like refreshing your computer screen. It's like refreshing your body, right? Or resetting your body. So get to nature um, and it really helps. Because here in this concrete jungle, 
<clears throat> you know, with the stuff like x-rays, Wi-Fi. If you know what was before Wi-Fi, it was dial-up internet, so you don't have those radio waves, right? Radio waves, microwaves, a lot of electromagnetic stress, okay? So here are some tips on how to lower your stress levels. Here's a big, big thing that I always say. Turn off your phones when you sleep, okay? Because you don't need your phone anyway when you're sleeping. And when people say, but what if there's an emergency call? Well, if it was really an emergency, someone would be there at your doorstep and wake you up. Or they call your landline if you have one, All right? So I always turn my phone off at night. I hope you do that too. Another thing is, yes, I do have like two pairs of Bluetooth earphones, all right? But again, it's just too much uh, radio waves because, you know, when you're wired, it's actually better quality music. But yes, it's more convenient to have Bluetooth earphones, but as much as you can, right, to lower down electromagnetic stress, then this is another tip that you can do. Um, yeah, get into nature, like I said, right? Uh, the earth is very grounding. So that's why you actually, when, when you stay and you have a vacation, an extended vacation for like at least a week, you sleep better at night, you sleep earlier, you wake up earlier as well, and you feel a lot better because it's full of positive ions and it resets your body, especially if you haven't taken a break and getting away to nature for like a few months. Another thing you can do is, yeah, reset. Um, go on a digital fast, right? Just try to stop using your electronics. Like for me, um, when I have to think, I write down on paper now, or when I try, when I have to listen to, sorry, when I have to read books and stuff, I actually listen to audiobooks because it kind of helps from all that stress. Um, and I just play on a speaker. But again, it's still electronics, but um, at least I'm not staring at the screen anymore. Or get a book, right? Read. <laughs> um, yeah, so as much as you can, try to stay away from electronics because I think we use it way more than our um, generation ago used to. One thing I like to say to my clients is, um, Show me your schedule and I will show you your priorities. So when they say that there's a lot to work on here that I just gave you guys, um, I always say, show me your schedule, right? If you don't have a schedule and if you don't track what you do in a day, start doing it and then come back to me. And then usually you'll actually find that there's a lot of downtime that you're using for like say Netflix or gaming or I don't know, um, hang out with friends, right? Social life, maybe, you could actually, in order to improve your health, you could cut out some of the um, extracurricular activities just to, you know, keep your health, keep yourself healthy. Because, you know, if you're not healthy, you can't work, you can't socialize, you can't do anything, right? So give it some time. And when people say they don't have the time, it's usually because their priorities are not correct. So that's why I like to say, if if you think this is hard, just show me your schedule. And look at your schedule and you'll see your priorities. All right, so a few last, last few tips here just because um, talk about physical stress. Just because a lot of us are still working from home due to this pandemic, here are some tips on how you can improve your uh, work from home ergonomics. So um, 2020 20 rule is, and I do this a lot, um, I usually use my Fitbit if I don't have it like now. Um, I use my phone put an alarm on, every 20 minutes it dings, I stand up um, and I look 20 feet away, right? The window's right here, that way. So I look at least 20 feet away or something because then you don't always want to look at the same distance all the time because then you're just con contracting your, your eye muscles in that air um, length, okay? Sometimes I even close my eyes or if not, I actually, when I close my eyes, I look up or I go in circles or the other way. So it's a good exercise for your eyes just to, you know, when you're trying to stretch, same concept. It's kind of stretching your eyeballs um, to different areas. Because if we're always looking down from texting or from uh, the computer screen, but my computer screen right now is ergonomic, so I'm looking straight ahead. Ha. But yeah, if you're always looking down like so, you need to reverse that by looking up, okay? Even with the eyeballs. Two thirds of your forearm, I even say even as much as you can all the way to the elbow, uh, should be on the desk. So it's actually resting. Because if it's not, then you're hiking your shoulders and that's a lot of stress on your shoulders and some people actually keep a lot of pressure there okay next is um if you can if you're on the but we don't really use um 
landlines anymore or phone, right? We use our headsets, right? Or earphones or uh, put on speakerphone, right? And just put it down here. Monitor at eye level, which I have right now. Booyah. And hips over knees. What does that mean? So basically if your chair, right? If you can see, your hips should be above your knees, as you can see there. So that, that means that there's more pressure on your legs than there are there should be on your spine. If your knees are higher than your hips, that means that you're putting a lot of pressure on your spine. Um, yeah, so you wanna adjust the desk height to avoid shoulder slouching. Like I said earlier, right? Ideally, it should be around there. And uh, every so often, take a break and walk. So I usually do that during the 20-20-20 rule, okay? Um, hopefully this has helped. Um, again, it's all about stress management. Um, this is the second thing after we talk about nutrition. Um, if you're part of our program in the online coaching space, um, and if you want to get into that, uh, we do have a money back guarantee, three months sign up and you're good to go. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out. Website's here, email address, Facebook and Instagram. And hopefully I have another webinar for you next week. It's going to be about getting enough rest and sleep. I say hopefully because I'm busy, <laughs> but I'll make time. Okay. Just uh, yeah, busy with a lot of things happening right now. Okay, guys. Um, oh. Let me see if uh, there are any comments on Facebook. I don't think so. Nobody cares about me. So we are one more. Oh, there is. Yes. It's Justin Angeles. <laughs> My man. Thank you for commenting a lot of nonsense every single week. <laughs> I appreciate it, though, bro. Thanks, because that helps with the algorithm. All right, take care, guys. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, yeah, that's it. Bye, guys.